talking about is uh, modes of an R, modes of inhalation rather. And uh, specifically, I'm, I'm going away from uh, where we talked about the initial setup or the initiation of mechanical ventilation, and we didn't really uh, care all that much about which mode we went into, so long as that mode could provide full support uh, ventilation or have some sort of backup rate and volume or pressure um, in the initial setup. And now I want to talk a little more about how mo how the patient interacts in modes and and some situations where choosing one mode over another uh, may be considered. Now, I want to preface this by saying that if you go to the literature and you look at the, the evidence-based medicine, and I suggest that, that we all uh, should base our practice off of the best evidence available, um, current evidence-based medicine, that isn't necessarily always the case when we take the examinations, when we take board exams, because uh, it does take a little while to catch up um, with the evidence. But certainly in our practice, we, we should be looking at best evidence. And, and, and when you go to the literature, and uh, specifically when we go to ARDSNET, and we compare the modes of ventilation, specifically SIMV to assist control, these are the two uh, what I would call flagship modes of ventilation uh, for adult patients that are receiving volume control ventilation. It really comes down to assist control versus SIMV, and that's actually what I'm going to talk about today in this video. Um, anyway, when we look at the literature, it really doesn't support one mode or the other. When you look at um, mortality, morbidity, when, when you look at, you know, if patients ultimately benefit from one mode versus the other, and it doesn't really seem that one mode is associated with higher um, or lower rates of, of morbidity and mortality and higher um, rates of, of positive outcomes. So uh, I'd like to preface this with that in mind, um, that, that perhaps you know, ultimately uh, our patient being discharged home with a quality of life, it's neurologically intact and so on and so forth, uh, again, may not be as important with modes. Um, but there certainly are some things that we need to be aware, with, aware of uh, with modes of ventilation. So um, let's just go ahead and talk about these modes real quick. Again, I think everybody should have a pretty decent idea of what assist control versus SIMV is. And certainly, I've covered this on some other videos. And you're more than welcome to uh, refresh on those videos um, if you need to. So let's just talk about why I would consider assist control over SIMV or vice versa. So when we talk about assist control, it is, it is a full support mode. And it is a full support mode regardless of what the patient is doing. So if I were to look, and I know that I haven't covered ventilator graphics yet, but... I'll go ahead and explain what I'm talking about. So if we were to look at a certain type of scaler, we have what we call a ventilator for two, two types of graphics, scalers and loops, and we'll be looking at a, at a scaler here. And what I want to do is uh, we'll just look at a volume time scaler for now. So just looking at the volume of gas delivered into the lungs. And if I have somebody in assist control, I'm going to have a volume, let's say 500 milliliters, and the ventilator will deliver that volume, and the patient gets the volume, they ex, and then of course they exhale, and uh, so on and so forth. And if I have a rate of, let's say, 8, and a tidal volume of 500 milliliters, the ventilator is going to deliver this 8, 8 breaths at 500 mils. Um, um, uh, Per breath, eight, eight, eight breaths a minute, 500 mils per breath. It'll continue to do that. Now, we also know that in assist control, if the patient attempts to take a breath, the ventilator will sense that, will sense that the, that the patient is trying to take a breath and bear down, and the ventilator will give a breath. And if the patient, for whatever reason, is maybe hiccuping or um, hyperventilating or very anxious, every time the patient triggers the ventilator, the ventilator will give a breath. And we can run into issues of hyperventilation. Hyperventilation occurring um, in assist control. We blow off CO2 um, and we go into a um, respiratory alkalosis. 
which isn't necessarily a good thing for uh, critically ill patients. Now, if I contrast that with SIMV, we know that SIMV, just like assist control, uh, mandates that there's, and we'll just go back to this 8 and 500, that there is a mandatory rate and volume that has to be delivered. So, there we go. However, the difference is if a patient wants to take a spontaneous breath, they want to take their own breath, um, they can. Now, will that breath necessarily be a full 500 cc, 500 milliliter breath um, that the ventilator delivers? Probably not. You know, this patient's sick, they're on the ventilator for some sort of reason, they're probably not going to be taking as large a breaths. And um, so what you'll see is you'll see breaths like this, where the patient is taking spontaneous breaths, and then you have your mandatory breath, and then the patient may be taking spontaneous breaths. Now, you can see that in this situation, I still have a mandatory uh, volume and rate, my, my backup, my mandatory rate that, that's being delivered, but the patient is able to initiate, or not even initiate, but to take spontaneous breaths. Now, in assist control, a patient can't do that. As soon as this ventilator senses the patient's attempting to take a breath, the ventilator takes over and it just administers a full breath. Now, if I have somebody who's hyperventilating and they're breathing very quickly and I've I've changed my settings, the flow is good, um, they have good eye time, good E time, they're not breath stacking. Um, I've made the patient as comfortable as possible, perhaps I've given them some analgesia, and they continue to hyperventilate and it, it, and it is, it is you know, causing issues with maybe auto peep, um, it's causing issues with blowing off uh, too much uh, CO2 hyperventilation or um, <clears throat> hypocapnia. Uh, a consideration would be, well, maybe this patient would do better in SIMV. Maybe they would do better in a mode where they're not getting a full breath every time they trigger the ventilator. Instead, they're taking their own spontaneous breaths. And in that case, um, they won't hyperventilate quite as much in SIMV. And of course, their airway pressures, their, the mean airway pressure is going to be lower because every time in cis control, I trigger the ventilator, I get that 500 mil breath, and whatever my PIP, whatever my peak pressure is, we don't know here, but generally it's going to be, you know, a higher peak pressure than a spontaneous breath at a smaller volume. You can see that this patient up here, his airway pressures, he spends more time at high airway pressures, and of course the mean or the average airway pressure is going to be much higher here than down here. And uh, that certainly can uh, potential um, implications, uh, such as uh, cardiovascular implications, uh, volume barotraumas, things of that nature, could potentially be decreased by going to SIMV. Okay, so let's talk about specific patients. Certain patients that benefit from assist control up here would be patients that you know really need to take breaths, really want to take breaths, but they can't. They're, they're exhausted, they have some sort of neurological disorder, maybe it's a patient with diabetic ketoacidosis, and they need to hyperventilate. They need to be breathing quickly, they need the volumes, they need to compensate for an underlying metabolic acidosis. They have a compensatory respiratory pattern. Patients with compensatory res respiratory patterns tend to do much better in assist control um, because uh, they are probably tired, they're often tired, they're exhausted from the work of breathing, but they still want to breathe, they still need to breathe. So we can put them in assist control and that will unload some of the work of breathing but ensure they get that, that volume and that rate. Um, now patients that um, are generally doing better um, and don't have underlying respiratory problems uh, tend to do a little better in SIMV and um, patients that we're looking at maybe trying to get off the ventilator weaning or liberating, um, you can consider SIMV in those kinds of patients because I can decrease this mandatory rate and this will allow them to spontaneously breathe and we can see how their, their muscles are doing and, how, and um, uh, how well they're tolerating less support or less controlled breaths. So SIMV is a mode we can consider for, for uh, weaning, um, uh, certain patients, there's a lot of uh, fighting over is SIMV better versus some spontaneous modes, and we'll talk about um, the different types of uh, liberation next week.
Okay, guys, hopefully that uh, made some sense, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.